Network, thank you so much for being here with us tonight at Echo Base TV, where community happens. Welcome back to another EBN cast. It's the Coach and Nick show, guys. It's the Coach and Nick version of EBN cast. Ooh, yeah, yeah. first one ever. Yep, we are short staffed. Everybody is out today. It is Good Friday today. It is Easter weekend, so hence why we are short staffed. I have uh, a feeling this will be the best EBN cast we've ever had. I I got a feeling we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. Uh, hmm. a lot of non Star Wars stuff that we're gonna talk hit. about. No Star Wars, not today. Yeah. Nope, nope. It's uh, gonna be spicy. Yeah, it's definitely gonna be spicy. Uh, real quick, guys, there's four ways you guys can support us here on the channel. EBN memberships uh, are a good way to support us. Uh, we do have uh, a scheduled uh, member stream on the last Sunday of every month this Sunday, but it is Easter Sunday. So we did not announce this last week, but we are going to move, push that back to next Sunday. So our member stream will be next Sunday, not this Sunday. Yes. Uh, uh, Patreon, of course, coach just uploaded a crap ton of, um, audio book stuff. Uh, 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 documentary. Mm -hmm. uh, I got the newest episodes of Bad Batch. We're going to be doing uh, X Men '97. That'll be all three up. episodes of X Men '97 tonight. Yep, yep, yep. They'll be up there. Uh, and then, of course, our merch store that Coach also got up and going, which is way better than Teespring's uh, and a lot cheaper <laughs> than Teespring's. Also, and then of course, super chats where you guys can engage in the conversation and hit on stuff. Uh, that uh, we might not be hitting on. Uh, and who knows, maybe it'll turn yeah. into its own video. Uh, but those are just some ways you guys can support yeah. us here on the channel. Uh, thank you to everybody that is here today. Thank you for all your continued support. But without further ado, let's get in to the first topic, Coach. Hey, I'll, uh, before you get started, I, I just want to say real quick that, uh, you know, happy Easter to everyone. Yeah. Um, thank you, Rob, for uh, reminding us all that, uh, he is risen. Yes, so, absolutely fantastic. There's nothing, nothing better than that. You know, last Sunday, Nick, we were. I was in class uh, before church service started, mm -hmm. and I said, you know, they were talking about the cross and what does the cross mean? What does the cross mean to you? And I said, you know, uh, I think we should have a tomb like a rock. And they were like, what do you? Why do you say that? I said, because thousands upon thousands died on the cross but there's only one that raised from the dead. Oh, that yeah. was resurrected. Yeah. That's what separates Jesus. Yeah. So, Good point. Yeah. Amen, Rob. Yep, absolutely. Uh, so yes, happy Easter to everybody. I uh, hope everybody has a great Easter weekend. Um, but let's go ahead and jump right into this. Uh, first topic. Uh, this comes from Dual Shockers in the Woke Journalist. Jervon Perkins, I guess that's how you pronounce it. This is him right here with his uh Rambo bracelet and stuff. And uh, and I guess he's an educator, uh, he's a teacher during the oh. day. <laughs> and uh, that means he's like a great guy, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he is the one that wrote this ridiculous article. And also, mm -hmm. just uh, to give some context, uh, Metacritic is scoring Final Fantasy VII Rebirth very high, a 92 must play. Uh, user scores are getting a 9.0 uh, rating. Uh, that's over almost 3,000 
user ratings, almost 150 critic ratings. So the game is doing very well. People seem to like it. I just finished through the story. I absolutely loved it. Uh, me and Loki and Prince Jazal are going to do a, a spoiler review of the game uh, this next month at some point in time. Uh, but uh, this Joker right here uh, talks about how uh, Final Fantasy is a franchise has a short list of black main cast members because that's important these days. Uh, within the mainline series, there are both Barrett Wallace from Final Fantasy VII and Sh Shazja Castroy uh, from Final Fantasy XIII trilogy, which I never played. Uh, while as a black gamer, I've enjoyed their inclusion within the series. It's time for us to get a black character that doesn't fall into the same comic relief archetypes. Uh, and he goes on. I'm not going to read the entire article, but he goes on to basically talk about how Barrett's basically a comic relief character. Um, and they actually posted on their uh, this Dual Shocker site actually posted this. They have since deleted this tweet because they were getting ratioed all over the place i mean they were just getting trashed in the comment section uh but this is the image they put i'd love a black final fantasy character that isn't just comic relief uh, which makes me question if they even w played the actual game because barrett is a very in-depth character anybody that's played the game knows um uh, how serious he is. Uh, he's anti-government, anti-establishment, uh, and he lost his arm in a war with the government uh, and then lost his best friend and then went on to adopt his best friend's daughter and raise his daughter as his own. Uh, so this is a very well-written character. Uh, and here's some of the, the, the comments that uh, people are leaving on this. Uh, Mark the Cyborg, uh, who a lot of you probably know. Uh, you mean the guy who lost his arm trying to save his best friend? Then when he thought that friend died, he adopted his daughter and raised her as his own? Yes, what a clown. <laughs> Comic relief character. Uh, <sighs> hear it. Passionate freedom fighter and uh, devoted father is just comic relief. Maybe you're the racist. Uh, did you even play the game from Adam Krigler? Uh, oh, it, Adam. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's time to stop pretending that black characters are a necessity in every work of fiction ever. Stop uh, playing the, ex the example game with these people. Everyone knows they're wrong, but it misses the point. Diversity is not a requirement. Uh, and then have you ever played a Final Fantasy game in your life? Uh, and they go on and on and on. Uh, tons and tons of comments. And they were just getting destroyed in the comment section. So the article's still up, but the uh, but the, the tweet uh, actually came down. And this just goes into more woke nonsense uh, from of uh, the, the Gamergate 2.0. You yeah. know, game journalists out there that are trying to, uh, you know, force all this uh, DEI crap into, into attack gaming. freedom of speech. Yep. Attack freedom of speech and change narratives to something that there is nothing there. I mean, the, this, get, uh, this guy right here really had to reach far mm -hmm. uh, in this article uh, to kind of spin it this way. Uh, it's absolutely insane uh what they're doing but uh you know that's the that's the clown world we live in today uh thoughts on all this coach my, even though you're not familiar with the game i'm not but my big but i'm definitely familiar with everything has to identify to me or i hate it that is so dumb yeah you know i really enjoyed the blade trilogy wesley snipes oh. looks nothing like me no. I really enjoyed like all six or seven movies of Once Upon a Time in China, the story of Wang Fei Hung, played by Jet Li. Great series. I don't identify with that at no. all. And but but in today's world, you know, if it doesn't identify with you, it's bad. And yeah. it gets attacked because it's not like you. It's not, it's not uh DEI enough. You know, everybody can't be Mario. Here, yeah. and here's what I mean by that. Be like Mario, everybody. It's a me, Mario. All right, remember that Mario. He's an Italian plumber made by Japanese people who speaks English and he looks Mexican. Yeah. 
<laughs> right, oh, oh, and by the way, don't forget, he jumps like a black man. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. And so he's he's the perfect blend of every, he's he's an everybody man. Yeah. Mario is an everybody man. I never <sighs> thought about about that. Uh but you you don't ever hear that about the Mario series. Are there any black characters in Mario? I can't think of any. No. No, yeah. I, no, not that not that I recall. I've not played every game. Yeah. But like in the old Nintendo or you know, or all that. No. No, there's not. There's only three yeah. humans. Mario, yeah. Luigi, and Princess Toadstool. Yep. Uh, so, but yeah, it's uh it's crazy the the woke weirdos on that side of the aisle, how they try to make everything about them and about race and gender and, and all this crazy nonsense. Uh but uh the culture you know, war rages on. It's entertainment, it's movies, it's shows, it's 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 media. Yep. It's happening at Daily Wire. Yep. Yep. Uh, it is gaming. It's everywhere. It, it yeah. is everywhere. You Our culture is it. under attack. Period. You cannot escape it these days. Um, I mean, movies, entertainment, music, uh, video games, comic books, regular books. I mean, it is everywhere. And now, it, you know, and just going back to not get too political, but... Uh, you know, the, the book bans in Florida that DeSantis was doing, you know, they were raising a big, huge stink about that. Like, yeah. Oh, now we're, uh, th these, these are Yahtzees and they're, they're now banning books, you know, but they were very inappropriate for elementary school kids. I mean, they were literally showing very graphic, uh, drawings of, uh, sexual, uh, acts in these books, uh, not appropriate for children at that age whatsoever. Of not. And, uh, and for people to, to think that, uh, that they should have been allowed, uh, mm. are, I mean, I, I just think those, that's a whole nother level of evil right there. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Or are we, are we wrapping this topic up? Because this, we got, yeah. I got the perfect segue. Yep. 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 All right. Why don't you go and hit these super chats before we move on? Yep, yep. Let me hit these while Coach gets his ready. Um, Gamer One, member for 15 months. Hail, did you see the woke James Bond film? Uh, Gamer One, I am not sure what you're referring to. There hasn't been a James Bond film that's had the last one. Um, I, I don't think it was woke. I didn't see the last one. Um, I'm I'm not sure if you're referring to a new one that they're coming out with or or a James Bond like film. S clarify in the chat, gamer one, and uh, I'll look for your for your message in there. Uh, Blood guilty gaming for two dollars. Don't give money to Disney, and then he gives the finger emoji. Yes, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Don't give money to Disney, and then perfect segue into that. Graph web for two dollars. Hashtag cancel Disney Plus. Hail there it is web there Most it is man on the internet and then our boy valiant renegade what is going up brother five dollar super chat greeting gents we at tpp will have our response to bgg in the next couple of days happy to share what we can now yeah that is uh that is insane what's uh what's going on on over there i'm definitely looking forward to that video in they basically got told to stop talking about us yeah, yeah. Get my name out your mouth. Yeah, yeah. White yeah. boy. Yeah, yeah. And that's so, not yeah. that's not gonna work out well. No, no, <laughs> definitely <them>. not. <laughs> yeah, definitely not for the black gamer girls. Um, it's uh, it's funny. Yeah, I I did a video uh, talking about it the other day about the uh, the lawsuit stuff, and it's absolutely yeah. ridiculous. Uh, but definitely gonna be looking forward to that valiant. Uh, but thank you guys. For those super chats, uh, this super chat video is for you guys. Yeah. So right. my next topic, 
you know, in, so what what we're doing on today's EBN cast is I'm bringing the next topic, and then Nick and I are going to do one together to close the show. That's going to be big, and you don't want to miss it. Uh, yeah. And in fact, we're going to make it a a standalone video. Yeah, we're we're going to go video mode right here on the EBN cast today. But I kind of talked about it last night. We we kind of talked about it last night on our on our other show on our Thursday night show. Uh, and talking about how some things are just better left on the shelf. Mm. Like, um, everything doesn't need to be revived. No matter how much we love something from the past. Okay. Like, Mm. like here's an example. I don't think they could pull a live action Voltron movie off. I don't think they could pull it off. Yeah. Having that big, huge robot, that combiner robot against beasts the same size as itself. How are you going to lay a foundation for such a movie? Mm -hmm. You know, the whole movie, the whole first movie would be set up. How did they find the lions? You know, you know, and I'm not going to go off at the deep end. I just don't think it would work. But here's the thing. As much as I love Voltron, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Leave it where it is. It's perfectly fine where it's at. You don't need to bring it back because you don't have any ideas in the entertainment industry. Quit dusting things off that doesn't need to be revived. Yeah. Some of these things are near and dear to our heart. So it pulls at our heartstring. It gets us from the beginning. We've learned lessons when they have, look what they've done with Star Trek. Look what they've done with Star Wars. They so many franchises. Look what they just did with Willow. You oh, can't even watch yeah. that series oh. on Disney Plus. They took it off the streaming service. It yeah. was so bad. Um, some things just don't need to be revived. Nope. Well, one of the things that Nick and I loved when we were kids, we called each other at the end of every episode. X Men ninety seven. I'm sorry. X-Men the Animated Series. X-Men 97 is this new continuation of that story. Well, Morph looks so weird. (laughs) He does look weird. Yeah. You know, and he looks, you know, and people who were back in our day, if you've not been paying attention to the news, that's not Morph. Morph looks nothing like that. Mm -mm. Morph looked like me. Yeah. With hair. Yeah. So, uh, you know, they've they've changed this character and they've publicly said he's non-binary. And they dropped a little note, they dropped a little message a month back that there was going to be a love interest on Morse End for Wolverine. Yeah. <laughs> when in the original series, in season one, Morph was considered Wolverine's best friend. Yeah. And when Morph... When Wolverine thought he died, he didn't die. But when he thought he died, Wolverine was very upset. Inconsolable. But it had nothing to do with romance. It was bromance. Okay? So uh, there's a new, the third episode. And, you know, full disclosure, Nick and I hadn't even watched it yet. We're going to watch it this evening. Yep. And, and get all three reviews in their entirety. The whole thing. You could watch X-Men 97 on our Patreon with us. The whole yep. episodes will be there. But there's a scene in the third episode, Nick, that we're going to see here in a few minutes. And Morph walks into the bathroom. And I'm not going to read the article. that Nobody wants to hear me read. But Morph walks into a bathroom. And there's a man in there taking a shower. And he says, is that you, Gambit? And Logan, Wolverine, says, no, it's me. And then when he heard it was Wolverine, he went ahead and walked all the way in there. And he asks Wolverine if he could help him get the hard-to-reach places. What? That actually happens? We're going to see that. That happens. Oh, gosh. If this article's telling the truth. Oh. I mean, that's, that's what happened. So is there love interest on Wolverine's end? No, apparently they made it they made it to where he still loves Jean Grey. Yeah. 
morph has a thing for Wolverine. Uh, all right. So, anyways, hang on. Uh, I'll be right back. All right. So that's one thing. There's a rumor, and, and my point there, guys, is it would be better if they just left X Men the Animated Series alone. Uh, don't just just leave it alone. Don't revive it. Okay. So, anyways, uh, and I'm looking at your comments here. Nick got to go throw up. It's a whole 11 seconds. It doesn't matter if it's an ele- if it's 11 seconds or 11 minutes. Uh, pandering is pandering. Inclusion is inclusion. Agenda is agenda. You know. Uh, and here's the thing. It, it it stands to reason there will be more of it. Will there not? If they're doing that in for 11 seconds in the third episode, you don't think there's going to be more? Of course there is. So, uh, I, anyways, now there's talk of they're going to revive Spider-Man, the animated series. Another thing that... Please don't do that. As much as I love the show, please don't revive Spider-Man, the animated series. I know Spider-Man has been extremely relevant over the last several years, way more than the X-Men have. Uh, That's a given. Uh, As a matter of fact, Marvel should have brought back Spider-Man, the animated series, way before they brought back X-Men, the animated series. I mean, what were they thinking? and tried to bring X-Men, the animated series. Hopefully it lands so we could actually have X-Men movies because we're rebooting all that. I guess, maybe. Um, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> you guys are funny. Yes, Blood Guilty. That's what I'm saying. Keep destroying my childhood. Uh, that That's what's happening. Now, occasionally, franchises are brought back in a very good way. But how often does that happen? How many times do we get greatness when they revive something? We got it with Dune. In my opinion, it's incredible. Dune Part 2 is as good as any movie that I've seen. Um, We got greatness with the resurgence of Top Gun. In my opinion, which I might be in the minority here, and that's okay. Uh, no pun intended. Um, we got greatness when they revived Tron with Tron legacy and, and Tron uprising, but more times than not by far, what is revived is destroyed. Look at GI Joe, look at transformers, look at star Wars, you name it. If it's something that they've brought back, look at the predator franchise. Look what look what ha- has happened with a- the Alien franchise. Mm. It's just not good. So Nick, you didn't see this. There's a rumor that they're they're going to now bring back Spider Man the animated series and continue that much like they are X Men. Would you have any hope? As much as you like that show, you and I both loved that show. Mm-hmm. Would you have any hope that it would be just like it was back in the day? Great. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh. I'm looking forward to checking out this X-Men 97, but I have zero hope and faith that it's going to be anything like what I loved when we were kids growing up, uh, watching that. And same thing if they were trying to bring back the Spider-Man animated series. Uh, I'm just, everything they touch just turns to garbage. Uh, And the clip that you were referring to that's in this third episode uh, is going to be so cringe. when 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 we're watching that uh now so someone you, in chat said when you walked away it's only 11 seconds well i and my comment my reply was i don't care if it's 11 seconds or 11 minutes yeah. pandering is pandering the message is the message keep that crap out of it yeah yeah it has no place in this show uh in in my opinion and guys we got somebody else that probably has something some stuff to add on this as well Tom from Midnight's Edge. What's going on, brother? Hello. How's everybody doing? 
Good. Well, sorry, guys. I got to run. Just got a text from my. <laughs> I figured. <laughs> What's up, bro? How you guys doing? We're good, good. good. We're good. Yeah. So, did you hear about this? Uh, this stuff on X Men ninety seven. This uh, third episode. This was, uh, shower scene with Morph and Wolverine. And, I uh, heard a little bit about it, but I have not seen it. Um, so I can't really comment on the actuals of what's in yeah. there, but I mean, are we surprised, but are we even really, would we have thought of my, I guess my question would be, would people even be thinking anything of it if it wasn't for them putting out there in our brains that this new morph was by or whatever anyway. So I guess that's the big question here at the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, they kind of laid that seed before the show ever even released. Um, yeah, they did. So, so now when you're, seeing stuff like this you're automatically going right there with it so Uh, and and the the bigger the bigger topic of conversation here tom is i really wish that the entertainment industry would stop dusting things that they take off the shelf and reviving it Uh, you know because so many more times than not they just damage franchises they kill your love and enjoyment of what used to be franchises like and you may disagree with some of these but predator alien star wars star trek now they're doing it with x-men i mean you just you you know sometimes they get it right for me they got it right with dune they got it right with tron they got it right with um top gun but man what a list of things that that have been revived that just uh fell flat tarnishes it tarnishes the the legacy. Uh, so we talked about it last night. Nick, there's actually an article that covers this in the Ghostbusters Frozen Empire where, guys, if, if you missed our show last night, I fully expected I was about to see in that moment watching the film, I was about to see the first teenage lesbian ghost kiss in cinematic history. Nick, Tom, I thought we were friends. Tom Tom definitely has some thoughts on this. So, 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 so fun, f- funny that Coach is bringing the, bringing this up. I, I haven't told Coach your your thoughts on this, Tom. So he's he's not he's not aware. But, uh, it's just kind of a meme now. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So um uh and, and I didn't know Coach's thoughts on this until our show last night because I hadn't talked to him. But you I agreed with them. Yeah, yeah. I and and we talked about this on Mister H's stream it, and and. Tom is one of the people I was referring to coach that, that had a different viewpoint. He didn't see it that way. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, it, it, so I remember you saying that and everybody yeah. didn't see it the way that we saw it through that lens. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, maybe that's just how, you know, we've been I think impacted. The big, I was gonna say, I think the bigger problem with this is, and this is where like, I see the debate coming from is like, would we, would we have even be having this conversation five, 10 years ago, right? Would we be thinking this? Cause where I'm coming from on this is I see a lot of people and rightfully so, because we've been inundated with it constantly bombarded with it. Like we literally have lesbian kisses in, in, in Disney movies now, right in star Wars, no less. So for, for anyone to make this leap of logic that there might be something more there than what's, there on the screen totally understandable totally understandable the thing i have with this is is they don't commit to it um the most i can really accuse them of is gay baiting and i didn't even see that myself but there are people who are saying that and i understand but to me i see it it is a lot of people on one side of the fence that were also calling out people for shipping people like poe and finn for instance right Mm -hmm when it was just over a jacket and I'm like, have we really come to this point now where we got to really be careful with chasing gay ghosts, not to be punny. Sure. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like, like, and the reason I say that is because I think it overall hurt this film, which I think a lot of people would have enjoyed had this not been put out there by so many people. Um, because there's a lot of reviewers who I felt didn't really do a very good job and i'm not speaking of reviewers in necessarily in one group or another or anything like that i'm just saying there's it was a whole swath because like the, the mainstream reviewers hated this movie went after it for certain reasons yeah other reviews went after it for certain other reasons some you know mentioned the 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 gay baiting in it some didn't you know um so i think what we have here is just a problem where 
just putting that idea that there's even a, a possibility of it in there, it really turned people away from seeing this film. And I really wish that more of the reviewers would have at least said, look, even though I felt like this was a problem with the film, it does not go anywhere. It does not actually come to any fruition. So I feel like there was a misconception put out there about the film that probably drove a lot of people away. That's going to hurt the, 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 any future, you know, ghostbuster films. But on that note, you, you make, make an interesting point coach. And we actually did a video about this very subject. And that is there was a recent study that come out and it says that millennials and zoomers don't want remakes, reboots, sequels. They mm. want their own stuff. Thank we you. have hit a stagnation of pop culture. And Andre brought this point up the other day on the show, and he's 100% right. We have hit a point where with clothes, music, film, and in some respects, gaming outside of like, you know, technical visual advancements. And, yeah. and same thing goes for just about anything else where we have had cultural stagnation. Nothing has changed. And he made a great point. You take somebody from 1984, from 40 years ago, and you put them in 2004, 20 years from where they are to 2004, they would have, you know, culture shock. Like you wouldn't believe right. Dealing with, you know, just this new thing called the cell phone and the internet. And what is this music and wow, movies. What is that? Holy crap. You know, like yeah. they would just be completely just bombarded and have to it'd take them a while to adjust. Now you take that a, a person from 2020, uh, 2004 and put them in 2024. It would be more or less, they wouldn't have to adapt to much other than how long would it take for them to be canceled? Yeah. That would be the countdown. <laughs> like, it would literally be a matter of how many hours before they say something that would get them canceled because otherwise they could probably figure out a smartphone pretty quick. The internet outside of social media hasn't really changed much since 2004. And they'd probably wonder what happened to Napster. Their clothes would be fine. Their hair, yeah, they <laughs> yeah. would be like, why do I got to pay for music now? What yeah. the hell is this? Uh, that's the internet's funny. fast. That's cool. Like, yeah. <laughs> wow. I could download a whole movie and like, but they would be like the, the culture shock would come in and be like, what in the world is going on here? Like, yeah. And it would be, and, and I could see where kids nowadays, they want their own thing. The last original thing kids had was really Harry Potter. Right. Oh. But, that's there's not been much created and, and and it's these companies fault and it goes exactly to what you're saying coach and that is they're afraid or they know that if they try to create something new and especially if they shove it with all this dei stuff in it most times it's just going to fall flat on its face and fail mm -hmm. so they have to appropriate other things they have to use these other things and that brings us to the whole crutch of the problem right and you okay. see the trend there are fewer people going and watching it's with, with every Star Wars series that comes out, there are fewer watchers. Now, like like you like you we talked about Ghostbusters, the movie. You know, it, it's interesting. Um, I gave the movie a four out of ten. I didn't wow. hate it. I didn't hate it. I thought Afterlife was far superior uh to this one. The main reason I didn't like this last one wasn't because of the things that we were just talking about with, with the, with the kid, with the girl, with the, with the, the, you know, intended, you know, whether that was intended or not, who knows? I don't know. That actually has nothing to do with my dislike of the show. I, when, when the kiss didn't happen, I was able to go, didn't happen. So, uh, so that's, that's a moot point, you know? Um, but there's certainly, fewer people going to watch whether that had something to do with it and reviewers like you're mentioning or entertainment's just dying on the whole. Um, but it's interesting. This article comes out at the Western journal teen characters implied lesbian romance with ghost is the central beating heart of new ghostbusters film. Oh Jesus Christ. That's the premise. Pardon the, my friend. Sorry. The, the, that's, that's definitely a, uh, that's definitely a stretch. So, so there. yeah. So Tom <laughs> sees, I never, I never even assumed that it never hit me. Tom sees it like in its innocence, me and Nick are sitting there waiting for the hammer to drop and it didn't. And then this person goes the totally the opposite way with it. Well, 
And let and, me and look at this. Uh, I highlighted this. At the very least, the romantic tension between the two characters is heavily implied. Many fans, <laughs> both in favor of and against the plot point, even felt the lesbian nature of the la- the relationship was overt. And I can't, I can't argue that point, right? What my, where I'm coming from, and here's not so much. I, I wish it was more innocent. I wish I was that. It's more so. Uh, just where my brain was going with the character from the start. And now in, in, in retrospect and seeing it more than once, I can see where people are seeing things. Like I, I can't deny that right. but my brain went and I don't want to get too spoilery here, but like my brain went to, there's a trick here. She's tricking. So like, I wasn't even thinking hmm. about that. And the other side of it too, was I was paying more attention to the fact that, and this is where I think some reviewers are overlooking certain things when they're getting to this, the fact that Phoebe is, obsessed with just ghosts period right like there's a scene early on where she's down in the new ghostbuster facility that they have that they're testing out all their new equipment and all that business and she has almost this little et moment with one of the uh, little stay puff guys and podcast comes in and smushes him right it's a very funny moment but people are forgetting about it's like no phoebe's trying to connect with ghosts in general i don't think it has anything to do with a sexual nature and that's also i didn't really even think of that because Egon was never a very sexual person. <laughs> like, no. I mean, it, he had Janine throwing her at herself at him and he could be, yeah. he could care less. But we like, do know uh, he had to have procreated at least once in his life. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> this is true. Probably for science. Uh. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and speaking of, of sexual tension, I mean, I remember the first time I watched Ghostbusters. 19, 1984, which I saw in the theater. But I didn't, when I was four years old, I didn't know what a blowjob was. Yeah. yeah. But the first. I learned because of police academy, but yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it happened in Ghostbusters. A ghost did, yeah. gives Ray one of those. Yeah. And I'm like, seeing it as an adult, I, it was shocking. It was shocking. Yeah. Um, uh, and to be ahead. fair, you're right. Like the original Ghostbusters wasn't necessarily meant to be a family or a kid's film. Now the the, the tone has shifted a bit. And maybe that's why they didn't commit to it, even if there was a little bit of baiting. Now, I've read interviews with the director. He has never once even hinted that that's what's going on. He has only talked about a friendship and the fact that, you know, both of them are teenagers and one will be forever a teenager and the other one's upset because she's young and all the things that I've pointed out. The, the actress was asked about it once that I found in an interview and she kind of sidestepped it and then just started talking about acting. And then she went into her crush about Hayden on Chris, Hayden Christensen. So, I mean, I don't know if that's her way of kind of saying, well, yeah, but I'm straight, you know, like, yeah. you know, like, I don't know. I don't get it. Cause I'm like, well, she didn't really answer it, but she didn't really like say, oh no, no, that's not there. And he's like, she, but so that's where I'm like, I can totally understand the gay baiting. Yes. And I learned a lot about sex from police Academy <laughs> and Porky. <laughs> a yeah, lot. I, I got the, the Blu-ray box set of those just a couple months back of police academy uh love those well i love the first four uh after four uh started, started i agree with you hill. i like five <laughs> a little bit but yeah after that i agree with you no. but no like and that's the thing i don't understand why some people are rating this on the same level as they would in like the 2016 film i'm like are you guys really thinking this is that bad oh it's way I mean, better than 2016 i, I mean and i get it i gave it a six be... out of ten a mileage will vary kind of thing. But as a, as a kid who grew up with the, the, the real ghostbusters cartoon and really, you know, like when that sequel came out, I was there opening night. Uh, I was a huge, huge ghostbusters kid until Ninja turtles came along. And then that was my new thing. And so for me tonight, I, when I saw it, I was like, I was picking things out that were Easter eggs. Like there's even an episode where Egon basically does the same thing that Phoebe does is turns herself into a ghost. And, and there's other plot points. I'm like that. I swear that's been in an episode before. And I've been, having people sending me and and I've been finding them myself and stuff. So there's a lot of Easter eggs and things to like here, but at the same time, as far as a film goes, it is very over bloated. There's things clearly missing. I wonder if there isn't bits and pieces that are missing that might've helped the overall lesbian thing, not be such a big deal. Like, cause again, not to get too spoilery, but we're that far off that the movies already kind of failed and anybody who's going to see it has already saw it. But uh, like, I mean, a Do you think we'll get a different cut of it on physical uh maybe but i don't know i think the director said no we won't get a director's cut but we he does have some deleted scenes but i don't know if they're going to show up because that's what i was just going to say is i i'm sure there's got to be some deleted scenes because the trailers there's tons of stuff in the trailers it's not in the movie 
And it makes me wonder if there's not a scene that supports that Phoebe's a bit more interested in this whole idea of what it's like to be a ghost and stuff more so than being obsessed with the girl herself, because that's the whole thing is the girl wants to go to the other side anyway. So it's not like she wants to hang out with Phoebe for the rest of her eternity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't get that, but like, I swear there's gotta be a scene. Cause when we first get introduced to that machine that separates the, the entity from the, the, the haunted objects, mm-hmm. Phoebe asked the question, have you tried it on anything living yet? And the scientist British guy, I can't remember his name offhand just escaped me, but he's like, no, we haven't. And then when she talks to her, the ghost later on, she says it like, it's a certainty that she knows it's not lethal. So that tells me she or somebody else tested it at some point in between there. There's probably a scene we're missing. Mm-hmm. That probably would have helped that a little bit to where people were like, oh, okay. So I said, I see why she's so obsessed with this now. And then, you know, same thing with like, cause there is a scene obviously missing where and I can almost predict what it is. Cause in the trailer, we see lucky get frozen from head to toe. We've known from what Ray says, once you get frozen, it's done. You're done. You die. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think because we go in the movie, it only shows her getting frozen up to her hand. And we cut to something else and then we cut back to her and Phoebe and they're on the floor and she's like drying her off. I think there's a whole sequence there where Phoebe's like, oh crap, Lucky's frozen. I got to unthaw her out now before she dies. And she figured out a way to thaw her out. And we're just seeing the final result of that. Whether she went and grabbed a, a you know, like a, a, a fire extinguisher or what, I don't know. Who knows what the hell she would have done to get her out of there quick. Something to come up with. Who knows? Not a fire extinguisher, but something that would have worked to get her out of there. But, uh, She would have come up with something probably, and that's probably what we missed, right? So that tells me there's probably a lot of stuff we're missing in this movie. Yeah, Uh, I'm with you. Um, Along the same lines that in in terms of not bringing back things and reviving. Right, right. You know, uh, Thundercat Toe, I'm enjoying X-Men 97 so far, okay? And, And that's actually ironic, Thundercat Toe. Uh, that was the next one I was going to bring up after the never ending story, <laughs> reboot, which I could only imagine how much fruity pebbles it's going to have. Uh, by the way, I don't know where Tom is on this, but the never ending story was a great iconic film that is timeless. It, it doesn't age poorly for me at all. I could watch it, you know, often, but the never ending stories two and three, are some of the worst movies ever made. Awful, unwatchable trash. Well, I think what you're kind of getting on there is like, yeah, I mean, a lot of these iconic films, how many of them had really iconic sequels outside Mm. of the Star Wars and Indiana Jones? Even the Back to the Future, it took people a while to come around to. Mm. And I'm going to remind people, there was a lot of people who outright hated Back to the Future 2 when it came out. Mm -hmm. People were so upset. First of all, they were upset that it was A, too dark, B too much like the first movie and C left on a frigging cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah. They were so mad. <laughs> and same thing with Ghostbusters 2. People were so disappointed by it. Now people love it. Yeah. But people got to remember back then, people just out and out hated it. Gremlins 2 is another one I finally have so glad that people have come around to because back then when it came out, people were like, it is stupid and dumb. And it's not even a sequel to the first movie. It just makes fun of the first movie. It's like, yeah, that's why it's funny. <laughs> now people are figuring that out you know yep, maybe no. it took a key and peel speed uh skip but still no i agree with you wholeheartedly guys and at, at this point i think the never-ending story is something that shouldn't be touched in our video we list and that list is even incomplete they have so many sequels reboots rebootables remakes coming out in the next year two years whatever that they're set up here that it is insane it is like the flip of where we were 40 years ago where all these franchises that they're making, you know, trying to rebuild again came from to begin with. It's like they forgot that the sequel and the remake and the reboot used to be the thing that they would kind of do, but not as much. It was the other stuff they would do. And th- that was the thing that they would only do a couple of them a year. Well, let's right? see how you react to this, Tom. Oh, geez. Well, <laughs> See, here's something that's never been tapped before. So, like, this is where I kind of fall into a gray area. I'm with you in a gray area, which for me is dangerous because that means I have I have some hope. Right. And this could be a Last Jedi experience for me all over again. I love this franchise. But if you, yeah. if it's not going to be on the level, please leave it alone. 
You know, and this thing's not been around since 1987. It's been a minute. Yeah. yeah. Any anything that they do, like in regards to this, I mean, I would love for this to come out and it'd be awesome, but oh man, I cannot think of an adaptation of a high profile eighties cartoon that went live action and was awesome. Um, I mean, GI Joe. The, look, I love the original Ninja Turtle movies, even the third yes. one. Yes. I've, I've never seen the third one. To this day. That's ne- never seen it. Almost 30 plus years ago now. Like, yeah, yeah. 35 almost. Yeah. But, I yeah, but I'm with you, G.I. Joe, Transformers. I, mm-hmm. I literally hate Michael Bay to this day for what he did to Transformers. The first one, I was, I didn't hate the first one, but after the first one, I just wasn't a fan. Uh, they lost me with all That's because they were the same yeah. movie after that. After yeah. Bumble, Bumblebee was, was decent, though. That was, uh, that was, was a bit that of was an exception. Really good to me. Yeah. Yeah. But then they screwed it right up with the next one right after that, though, though. I can't remember even the name of it now, but uh, yeah. yeah, I can't. I, I know can't. what you're talking the about. The one that just came out last year because yeah. I watched the that one and I was like, G.I. Joe at the end. Oh yeah. my God, was that un- almost unwatchable by the end? I was like, I can't believe yeah. I just said the, the, the Beast one, Transformer. <laughs> yeah, Beast, Beast Wars or, or whatever. Yeah, Beast Wars or something like that. Yeah. Rise uh, of the Beast, probably. Yeah. They, uh, and, and now they're looking at doing Thundercats live action. I'm just like, ugh. Well, it's like they've tried to get a He-Man done for years. I mean, this is even more complicated than He-Man, if you ask me. And I mean, look, I mean, probably special effects wise, are we where we can make this movie now? Oh, hell yeah. But I'm with Coach on this one. Like, I don't trust Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And look, the uh, the director, Adam uh, Wingard, the guy that's doing the, the Kong uh, Godzilla movie right now. He's the guy. Which I just the saw that. Yeah. I yeah. just saw the new one. He's saying he wants to stay a hundred percent true to the source material. He's saying the right things. This could be a good guy to do it, but it's still a risky play for me. Just, I had a lot of fun with the, the last two Kong Godzilla films that he did. I did. And especially this newest one. I liked even more. I mean, if he can keep up the, and that's what I've been, look, I'll be, I'll, I've been saying that the whole time about this movie since I saw it is like, my review is this is in, in a non non derogatory way. This is like a Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah. God, Godzilla X Kong is. So if this, I think you're right, coach, this is the guy to do this. Now, if the studio just lets him do what he wants to do is a different story. Mm. Uh, real quick. Master of the universe with Dolph Lundgren, 1987. I have the power to break <laughs> you. 22, uh, 22 uh, million dollar budget. It brought in seventeen million. I saw. I was yeah, one of those five dollar tickets. Yeah, well, that's um, why nobody wanted Ninja Turtles back in the day. Look, but, and but I they liked, did. They did good. They actually that was one property that actually did. Well, good that on was with the live action. That was. Uh, well, yeah, that was the highest grossing independent film of all time. Yeah. Until Blair Witch Project, and the reason for that was because Hollywood didn't want to touch it with a ten foot pole. But Bob Shea over at New Line Cinema, who also had the foresight to say, well, Lord of the Rings is three books. Let's make it three movies. He also was like sitting there and they're like, oh, these guys need some money for this Ninja Turtles thing. Is it popular? And Sarah Risher <laughs> said, yeah, my kids got all the toys. And he's like, all right, give them six million bucks. Well, <laughs> seeing, the, seeing the Masters of the Universe movie at eight years old in the theater, it worked for me. I liked it fine. It wasn't like seeing Michael Keaton Batman, but but it was fine. I tried to watch it as an adult a couple of years ago, and I couldn't make it. I, I had to stop it. Yeah. <laughs> as a sword and sorcery '80s movie, it's fine, but as a He-Man movie, it fails on all levels except oh, for Skeletor. Man. Skeletor. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and Dolph Lundgren looks like He-Man, but it's just barely the character, right? I mean, I mean, as He-Man, yes, but where's Adam? Where's the whole, you know? Yeah, thing, but just just it was a fail. But it did have Courtney Cox, which was cool. It did, yeah. So I don't, I don't know. All, all these franchises being brought back, 
you know, I'm just waiting on a live action Fraggle Rock adaptation. Like, <laughs> well, they uh, already brought it back in, as a series now. Did you see that? It's the what? second season now. Yeah, Fraggle Rock. Yeah. Oh, it, it, it's a cartoon, right? Uh, it's a well, it's the puppets again, but it's a sequel series or whatever. Yeah. I had not heard. It just that. got a second season. Yeah. So it's already been out. Yep. Is this on Disney Plus? Back to the Rock. Uh, I can't remember if it's on Disney Plus or not. Apple it's TV. Like, as I say, Henson um, actually owns it. So yeah. Apple. It's TV. all Henson. All Jim Henson Company did was sell the Muppets. That's one thing most people didn't realize is they kept everything else, but they just sold the Muppets to Disney, so they oh. didn't have to deal with the Muppets. Like they thought they would be fostered over there better. And that's what Jim wanted a long time ago too. So, but it just didn't work out. So Tom, I just recently, like last week got Apple TV and I've not really gotten in there and explored it. I had no idea that Fraggle rock was doing anything. I didn't I either. It was totally dead. I don't know how woke it is, but I haven't seen it myself. I have no hmm. idea interesting it might be good i have no idea i haven't heard anything on, on this season one recap I'm yeah apple's got now. some interesting stuff on there it varies but uh, uh well, what what's the uh have you watched the have you watched much on apple tv tom i watched tetris which i thought was an amazing film if it was my favorite film last year outside of godzilla i watched the michael J. Fox watch documentary on there and that was great I watched Monarch on there, which I thought was pretty good. It had some hiccups, but uh, yeah, I thought that was all right. But otherwise, I haven't got around a chance to watch much else. There's a few things on there I want to see. Mark Wahlberg's movie on there I want to see. What's that World War II? Uh, uh, oh, they have the uh, sequel series or whatever you call it to A Band of Brothers. It's uh, yeah. uh, something of the air. I can't remember now. Yeah, Brothers that of the looks air, interesting. Like yeah, th th that looks like something. Um that uh that would be worth checking out um real quick uh graph web sends in two dollar my puke bucket runneth over <laughs> hail graph web and thank you masters of the air sorry he masters sent that when we were talking about wolverine and morph <laughs> i i figured it was it was back during yeah. during that uh during that segment um guys i got one more uh video i want to react to and talk about that's a little bit on a, a funny note i sent this to coach earlier i don't know if he had a chance to watch it uh and i i re really want to send this to mr h2 i think i will after the stream uh but tom you'll probably get a kick out of this uh it's, it's our already. favorite it's our favorite movie pundit uh grace randolph <laughs> speaking of unwatchable go ahead so okay <laughs> Dumb shit, did Grace say this week? There it is. <laughs> I almost got to get the no no song with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was it. We were gonna, we weren't gonna see what she said. That was dumb. That was it's just. I got you. Oh no 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 no. Tom played that. That, that that's, that's me. Oh yeah. yeah that, that's she has a theme. Yeah, she I has a theme that. over on uh, Miss <laughs> Rachel's channel. And oh, that's, that's great. Theme. Uh, so this is actually a video. I didn't go to her actual video because it's long in, in this, um, uh, this is actually a video by, uh, Grizzy. Uh, so if you guys want to check, Oh, Grizzy, he's funny. He does good stuff. Yeah. Grizzy out. Uh, he does he's put he us does... in a few of his videos. Oh, has he? Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Maybe um, put this in one of his videos and it'll be like. Inception. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, he he's gonna watch our reaction to his reaction, <laughs> uh, but he kind of hits the main stuff in this uh, uh, Grace Randolph acolyte. Uh, so I'll I'll pause it off and on throughout just so you guys can kind of comment. Uh, but it's it's pretty funny. Oh, so we're going the to the acolyte now. Is finally discussing the acolyte trailer, and it looks very good. It looks excellent. I'm very excited. Dude, that doesn't sound very genuine. I guess you must have thought that if she was <laughs> I might not notice. Mom was wrong again. So she begins by accusing fans basically of lying in wait, waiting for the trailer to drop so they could immediately jump on it and start hating it. I was surprised that the Acolyte was so low. It trended when they announced they were going to do the trailer, but it was apparently just for people because they were getting ready to hate on it. 
which is kind of sad. As usual, she doesn't know what the hell she's talking about. The day <laughs> it did have more likes than dislikes. So it would be more accurate to say that the pro Disney crowd, the Disney Star Wars shills, were the ones waiting to blast this trailer with likes and false praise, more so than the haters waiting to blast the trailer with dislikes. These pro Disney NPCs come up with all their excuses, but the fact of the matter is, is that the ratio accurately represents how the fan base feels about Disney Star Wars. So for those of you who don't know, Chlamydia Burns is a radical feminist. <laughs> Her initially, she will have an orgasm over seeing Carrie Ann Moss. Carrie Ann Moss looks incredible. She looks so she great. She Trinity from the Matrix movies. She is a perfect Jedi. Shut up, shut up, you crazy bitch whore. I mean, oh it's absolutely perfect. I can't, I just, I... No I, just, I can't wait. How do you know it's perfect? You haven't seen the show. I mean, the pro Disney crowd is always coming after oh, boy. criticizing it. the show before Pulse it comes it. out. Why? There's my boy Pete. Let's see what Pete's saying. Yeah. So he said it'd be a huge mistake to go into the act light with any preconceived notions or headcanon. Watch the show for F's sake before you start making shit takes. Okay. All right. Uh, Valiant like wants the link for this, by the way. The what? Valiant said, "Send me the link." Oh, 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 uh, yeah, it's yeah, grizzy. yeah, yeah. It's it's grizzy. I'll I'll put it in the uh, I'll put it in the chat uh, right now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this I'll is, send in the link to the stream if you want. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you'll show well, up. But. Well, we're we're gonna wrap up right after this. Oh. Um, yeah. but uh, uh, let's uh let's continue. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Pete Pete's come after us before. Coach kind of uh smooth things over so we're like cordial now uh rising the show before it comes out why are you allowed to say it's perfect funny how that works isn't it you dusty old queef so here's a man with <laughs> she has a little nice <laughs> shot which looks great later on in the trailer wow another woke pro disney social justice there warrior type misgendering amandla stenberg <laughs> well, I, di I didn't even know this about uh Mendela Stenberg opens up about uh using they them gender pronouns. And I didn't even care. Yeah. You didn't know that? Man, no. we've been talking about it for over a year. I, man, I just I just forgot or it's it, it the thing is this stuff is everywhere these days. I can't hardly keep up with who is using Well, that's been the, one of the big things about the show is the cast. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. But I I completely forgot. I I mean, I'm yeah. sure well, I know we've talked about it, but I I completely forgot that she was you know, one of those uh, pronoun people. Yeah. Hashtag cancel chlamydia burns. Okay, so she misgendered her twice in the previous clip, and we have the misgender counter set at two. Now let's see how many more times chlamydia burns misgenders Amandla Stenberg. All right, there's Amandla Stenberg. She does look great. She looks phenomenal. Purple. I guess they're still finding their colors. Uh, she looks great. She looks great. I do think her hair looks phenomenal. I think she looks really great. You are a bigot. But this character seems like a combination to the uh, apprentice villain in Ahsoka and, uh, you know, uh, the apprentice villain in uh, uh, Obi-Wan. Wow. Doesn't even know their names. Hashtag fake fan. <laughs> um, those two ladies. Why don't we just get back to them? How about no? How about no? All right. Oh, there's a Chewbacca. I forgot what they're called. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Oh. 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 Star Wars at this point. Oh, no there's a Chewbacca. Is. You don't know that this is a Wookiee, and you didn't even remember that Obi-Wan Kenobi dies in A New Hope. But they got to have someone good in there. They got maybe, I mean, I mean maybe Obi-Wan could show up. Maybe we could find a way. You know, he'd be much older, I guess, at this point. But I. Yeah, no, no, he died, right? Ah, oh, darn it. Shut up, bitch. Dumb cunt. Fucking whore! Wow. The darkness rises. That's pretty cool. And for the grand finale, this would not be a Disney Star Wars Shills React video if she did not point out that the color of the lightsaber is... Red. That's red. All right, then there's a red lightsaber. Red. What? 
where the heck did that come from? Who caught it? Oh my god! What? <laughs> why? Uh, why do I choose to have chlamydia in my life? Jesus Christ! Make sure you hit that like button before you get out of here. So th that was the video. I found that pretty funny. I, I want to that... say that that man has officially swerved more on your channel than I ever have. Yeah. And I think true. we should do the no, no song just for that. <laughs> you click it, Nick. I don't even do you have do it. Even, do Find we it. Still have it. I haven't seen the no, no song in forever. Nick doesn't let me play it anymore. Well, this is the oh, new no, EPN. No, no, we're all, we're all no, 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 new no, age. No, 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 no. All right, not the whole thing, my God. Come <laughs> on, I haven't seen that in years. <laughs> it's been a while. What a prick tease. Well, here, here, you'll like this. The base network. Uh, yeah, don't come on the show and act like you're you're like, you know, you can be nice to Santa, that's cool, but don't go and try to do hit pieces on me and Megan and then show up like it's all cool. You're kind of a dick, all right? <laughs> <laughs> you're kind of a dick, all right? Yeah. Free advertising from Jason Ward. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, Jason Ward. Oh. Boom. Canceled. No the kidding. audience is with me. They want the no-no song for life. Oh, all right. Oh, it's 21 seconds. All right. N-O, N-O, no, 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 I didn't do it, so no bitch to me. N-O, N-O, no, 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 no. N-O, N-O, no, 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 no. Tom is literally dancing on camera. There it goes. <laughs> you know, uh, I remember one of the first tune. I remember like yeah. the last time Jeremy came on. He's the first thing he said was, "Coach, if you play that MF and no no song, no I'm problem. leaving." Yeah, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. Uh, I know. I wear it as kind of a badge of honor. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> anyways, yeah, I need to send that to Nate, that uh, Grace Randolph uh, acolyte. <laughs> She is an idiot. Uh, he likes but, his Grace Randolph bits, yes. Yeah, uh, but uh, that's going to pretty much be uh, woke trash garbage, and I cannot wait uh, for that to come out. Uh, oh, uh, quick thoughts, Tom, on um, uh, uh, Louis Gossett Jr. passing away today. Oh, yeah, it's really sad news, man. Yeah, I yeah. mean, talk about a guy who, and I mean, people like Paul was kind of giving me shit for this, but I... I don't see where I'm wrong in pointing out like he was somebody that especially during a time when we were transitioning, you know, after civil war rights and stuff like that, he felt like one of those black actors that didn't, he wasn't defined by his race. Yeah. Right? He Bay Morgan have, Freeman. Like, yeah. And I, I did, it's funny. Cause I compared him to Sidney Poitier, Morgan Freeman, yeah. those kind of guys, you know, that's where Paul gave me some shit earlier on the show, but like, no, I seriously, I stand by that. I mean, with things like officer and a gentleman i mean iron eagle from enemy mine i mean he was playing roles that most black actors wouldn't get and i that's what i mean he was never defined by his race at least in my eyes from the time he, I, I never heard him talk about it or no no anything like that i loved him in jaws 3 even like he takes a bad oh, movie yeah, yeah. <laughs> lifts it up a little bit more you know I, I mean, forgot he was in yeah, that. He, right. he, he talked about world. he talked about ending racism a lot, uh, and but he always addressed it like it was an evil. He didn't address it as white man bad. The no. white people did us wrong. He never went about it that way, and he did quite a bit uh, to help support veterans. Yeah, uh, you know, he did a lot of really great things. Well, he, uh, and we miss him for sure. Well, he actually plays, I mean, in, in the movie Iron Eagle, as goofy as it comes off to some people. I mean, it's loosely based on a true story, and he's playing a real person. Um, so, I mean, go ahead and check out the real individual that he's based on in there. Plus, you know, just look at the, those are some great, the, at least the first one is anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah, movie. One, yeah. I mean, check it out if you haven't. It. it doesn't get enough love. And I know it's harder to find, but I mean, yeah, Enemy Mind's another one of his that, oh, my God, talk about a performance. Yeah, really, really good. Iron Eagle's one of my favorite movies it, it it's probably in my top 10 uh of favorite movies of all time i love that movie i could literally watch it yeah see i don't have it on uh yeah i, I, I might import have this. I think it's from spain or italy but yeah 
You'll get it now. My favorite Lewis Gossett Jr. movie ever, Iron Eagle is a close second, is Digstown. Oh, him that's coming, a good one too. Yeah. Him coming back as a professional fighter in his 50s and beating 10 straight men that day in one day. So good. So good. Yeah, he's great in uh, Toy Soldiers as well. Yes, and, he was. Yep. Uh, just so many great films. Just a just a huge amount of work that he did. Great veteran actor, and uh, sad that it was that he's gone. Yeah, yeah, eighty-seven. My, you can't complain about that. No, a, but I, it's still a little long young. life, you know. One of my favorites with him was the one he did with Chuck Norris, uh, Firewalker. Uh, Firewalker. Oh yeah, Firewalker. Yeah, that's the yeah. thing. He's done so many movies, man. Just so many movies. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, pretty yeah. pretty funny. Pretty funny. Too bad. Yep. But anyways, guys, uh, that is going to do it for us for EBN cast episode 16. Uh, thanks Tom for showing up on our short staff day. Sorry. It was uh, a little late. Oh, uh, that's fine. No Mike, uh, Mike is out today. John F. Trent is out today. Loki is out today and coach is in today. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a rarity. I got to stream a coach. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> my time it's is limited. <laughs> yeah, very. <laughs> uh, but uh, Tom, tell everybody uh, what you got uh, going on, coming up. Anything you want to promote? Um, or out there? I'm sure I'll show up at some point on some stream, but uh, most likely Flashcast tomorrow night. I'll um, also be on. Uh, uh, I think I'm supposed to pop on on Valiant stream to talk some Kong and Godzilla. We'll see if he has time. With considering all the Disney news, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, definitely, definitely looking forward to um, Valiant's uh, release of all this uh, yeah D stuff. Uh, yeah, because be, uh, uh, for those who don't know, this morning he came on to talk about it, but uh, they also have an idea that, that that they may Bob might not have as many votes as he thinks he does, and Pelts might have the edge right now. Which I is saw kind of some, why he's going into panic mode. Yeah, some mm. major media entity was saying that Pelts may have more votes. That's what Valiant had, had come out and said this morning too. Yeah. So, yeah, it was it was breaking somewhere this morning. Uh, the headline that would be awesome. Yeah, I don't um, know if he got out ahead of that or not, but I know he has some of the same sources as some of these other people that uh, have been running some of this stuff. In fact, I know he's been in even contact with some of these other reporters and stuff. So I know they have either the same sources or very similar sources in there and they check with each other and stuff. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised, but that's yeah, going to heat up. There's a lot going on with this man. It's getting interesting with all the lawsuits and now with the uh, proxy fight going on here, it's going to be strange, but yeah. And also on, on Sunday night, just to get away from all the uh, important talk, uh, I do a show uh, where we talk about our top five favorite things with a panel. And the plan is this week, and this is the first time I'm announcing it, so nobody else knew about this before as far as what the topic was. I know it's not much of an exclusive, but hey, we're talking about our top five favorite monster movies in celebration of Godzilla versus Kong, so or Godzilla X Kong or whatever. So yeah, that's uh, basically my weekend. And uh, of course, I want to wish a happy holiday weekend to all those who are celebrating, of course, as well. Awesome. Yep, absolutely. All right. Well, guys, that is going to do it for us. Uh, thank you guys for being here. Uh, thank you to Tom for showing up and guesting today and coach with his rare appearance. Uh, we'll see you guys next Thursday. You got one more super chat, by the way. Oh, that's right. Probably that's something we could t go out on, actually. I don't know. Ah, uh, yep. Yeah, we'll go <laughs> Melbourne. Oh, and and I don't coach, I don't know if you saw the not this last episode of the Game Chasers, but the one before it. Uh Melvor talks about Melvor, you missed it because Coach was talking about how his favorite toy was the Falcon. Melvor trashes on the fal Falcon and talks about how it's overrated. <laughs> In that's the, why Billy's my favorite game chaser. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding, Melvor. Just kidding. And, and but but Billy actually picked up a Falcon. Um, at I think a flea market or the antique shop. And hey, it had is Melvor still here? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, he is. I gotta. Well, for another time. I was gonna show him one of one of my new pieces in my case, but oh, I'll show go him grab it. it. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Do it. <laughs> 
yeah so coach just got uh, another collection um and uh he got some pretty interesting stuff i wish i ready yep this is part of a collection that i just bought a piece that i've never owned and i've owned almost everything vintage star wars you could imagine yeah Plastic oh cape. my, and there's a plastic one, yeah. Plastic yeah. cape or vinyl cape Jawa. Very yeah. hard to come by. Mm. And you know it's wow. real because it's got the uh, little ridges on the inside of the... It's called crosshatch pattern. Yeah, yep. Yep. You probably on. have to put your hand up there right behind it. I can kind of make it out with the lighting when you were tilting it. But yeah. Is that a Chewbacca? Yeah, is that oh, a Chewbacca? <laughs> <laughs> Stupid Grace yeah. Randolph. <laughs> Tom, thank you for being here with us, brother. Yeah. No problem, bro. It's been a lot of fun. I need yeah. it. Yeah. All right, Melvor. We are gonna end out on that. So thank you. Play guys. two point oh. Yeah, I just is there a two point oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do I'll do the two point oh one. Oh, All right, here you guys go.